I'm Sandy Oliver, and I'm going to be your instructor for Humanities 115 um, this fall 2021 semester. And I need to walk through some things for you, go through the normal first day stuff like we were sitting in normal classes, and um, we have to go through a certain amount of things on the first day just so to get everybody acclimated to the class and to the syllabus and all of that. Um, some of it's legal stuff, some of it's um, things you need to know things that I do that other instructors might not do, that kind of stuff. So um, if you haven't printed off your syllabus or you don't have it up on another screen, pause me and go do that. It'll make much more sense if you have a copy of it to look at. Um, the other thing, excuse me, the other things we're going to go through is the um, course schedule. Sorry, I have to look sometimes. Um, and we're going to look at um, the major assignments and when they're due. Um, so the syllabus is, of course, under course information and then syllabus. Um, the other pieces are under course information and then major assignments, um, and they'll be right there. Um, the actual course schedule um, you can get on um, the course information. It has its own little box, so you can go there. If this is your first semester taking online classes, um, so you haven't worked with Blackboard before, um, you might want to invest an hour or so in the um, student orientation for Blackboard. Um, when you go to sign in to Blackboard, um, there's a click in the upper left, um, actually middle of the screen now, um, to get on to that student orientation. And it's very helpful. Um, if it's been a little while, um, then you might want to do that as well just to kind of remind yourself of how to do things and where things are. Um, I am also up for questions and things, so if you have a question, just email me and it'll be fine. Okay, so, syllabus. Um, your syllabus is six pages, um, and then I have other stuff, and yeah. Um, most of this is stuff just so that we have a document which is a contract between you and I, and it's a lot of it is dictated to us by the state, some of it is dictated to us by our admin here at JCC, and some of it's just my stuff. So we'll go through a little bit of everything. Um, this is Humanities 115. It's a three credit class, uh, which means at the end of the semester it'll count for three points um, towards your GPA. Um, hopefully you'll have all 12. Um, it's a weird little system. Um, A's are four points, and so you want an A. And it's worth three credits, so it's 12 points towards your GPA, so that's kind of nice. Um, if you have not um, taken English 111, that's okay, um, as long as you could be taking it this semester. Um, other than that, we don't have any prerequisites. Um, this is a Humanity Fine Arts transfer class. A lot of you need to take it specifically for your um, program. I know IT is one of those. Um, I believe also uh, criminal justice and um, some of the other pieces um, like you to have um, Humanities 115, critical thinking. Um, the name says a lot about why you should take this course, um, but we also do some formal logic. Um, it's the only course on campus that does that, and so um, we try really hard to help you get through that. And um, that's why a lot of your programs have put you here. So um, be patient. It'll be okay. Um, the last day to drop this course without a grade penalty is November 3rd. Um, so make sure if you get to that point and you're like, this is not working well this semester, bail. Come back and do it again. Um, it doesn't hurt your grade to do that, your GPA. It might hurt your financial aid, though. So make sure you're making an, an informed decision. Um, like I said before, I am Sandy Oliver. Um, you'll see Sandy Dolan Oliver on a lot of things. Um, my husband and I got married seven years ago, um, so we were a little older than normal to get married. Um, and so I already had a career and a life and all that before that, and I was Sandy Dolan, and so a lot of things um, out there with my name on it still have Dolan on it. So that's why it kind of shows up here and there. Um, you'll see I'll sign my work. Um, I think that's important, and it's a smiley face, an SDO, Sandy Dolan Oliver, and so that's that's what you'll see at the ends of lots of things online. If I send things to you on email, that's my signature. Um, so that's what that is. I get questions every semester. What is that? It's my initials. 
Okay. Um, because I'm an adjunct, um, I don't have my own office, which means I don't have an office phone. Um, the rules here at JCC are that um, in order for me to talk to you on the phone, I have to use a campus phone. Um, I am not on campus very often. Um, today is a exception day, um, so I can make some videos and do some things, which is why we have a mask, just in case. Um, remember, please, please, please remember, if you're coming on campus for any reason at all, um, but for especially for classes, make sure you have a mask. Um, make sure you wear your mask. Um, please, please, please. Um, help keep each other safe. Um, you don't want to get sick. You don't want to give it to other people if you have it or if you've been around it. Um, even if you're vaccinated, you need to have a mask. And personally, please get vaccinated. Um, that's how we get over these things. Um, we're not doing a very good job right now, we being humans at large. But um, so think about that very seriously and don't buy the folks who are being fear mongers on that. So anyway. Um, I don't have a phone for you to call me, so you have to email me. Um, I am very quick to turn around emails. Um, JCC email comes straight to my phone, um, so I see it when it pops up and I answer it as soon as I can. Um, sometimes that means I send you a quick little, I've got your message. Um, I have to get back to my computer in order to get things because that's where a lot of my files and stuff are. Um, you'll find I'm kind of a mix of cutting edge tech and then old school. So sometimes when my things are old school, I have to go find them somewhere. So anyway, um, my pledge is to get back to you every day, um, about 24 hours. It may be 26 hours. It may be 22 hours if you know I have to go back and do things. But um, I try to get back to you as soon as I can, and I will definitely get back to you, you know, within the next day. Um, on the weekends, um, especially on Sundays. I try really hard to disconnect a bit and um, have some downtime, some true downtime. Um, and I um, encourage you to do that. I'll get a little bit more towards that when we get to the attendance and assignment stuff. But um, if you email me on um, Sunday, I will probably get back to you Monday morning. Um, sometimes I do have a space um, in the evenings where I'll get some things done. Um, but that's not usual for me, and we'll get onto that later. But anyway, um, this is a critical thinking class. We're going to do some writing. We're going to do some reading. Um, we're going to do some exercises and tests and papers and such. And we're going to really thoroughly get at this. So um, I hope you're ready for some pieces. Um, on page two in the syllabus, um, this is a 100% online course. Um, it's what we call an asynchronous online course, which means everybody has a different time um, that they can be on. There's no um, requirement for you to be online at a certain time. Um, now, if you have one of the dark yellow courses and it's an asynchronous, um, that means you have to be online for class at a particular time, not us. Oh, no, I'm asynchronous, not synchronous. Synchronous classes have to be online at the same time. So anyway, we're online all the time. Don't worry about it. Um, your student outcomes here, things you should be able to do once you finish the course. Um, some of these you'll say, I can already do that. That's wonderful. Um, we'll improve your skills, hopefully, and go on from there. Um, the textbook is important. Um, unlike a lot of other college classes, um, this is a course that needs an apparatus. It needs a book. Um, it's not just, a, hey, tell me what you think about this stuff. Um, this is serious um, sort of mathematical, a little bit of philosophy. I tell people I love teaching this course because it's a little bit of everything. Um, it's a little bit of literature, a little bit of philosophy, um, some communications, and a little bit of math-ish things in that we do things in um, some of these procedures are very sequential and they follow specific rules. And so that's what makes it math-like. But the book is The Power of Critical Thinking, um, sixth edition by Dr. Lewis Vaughn. Um, I love this book. Um, I know English geek and out on books, but that's okay. Um, Lewis Vaughn is amazing um, as an instructor. Um, he's amazing as a writer. Um, this book, um, some of the stuff in it is a little bit dated, um, but most of it is amazing stuff. Um, the sixth edition updated a couple of things. Um, we have a big section on, on fake news. 
Um, we have a big section on advertisements and things like that and how to kind of break those down and make sure you're not getting scammed. Um, and the scams, of course, get more and more strategic and complicated as time goes on. Um, I don't understand why people spend their time trying to figure out how to make other people miserable, um, but there it is. Um, so critical thinking helps with that, and so we go through quite a bit of that, um, starting in Chapter 4. Um, but that's the book. I also have it up on our Blackboard page. Um, there's Our textbook has its own little thing under course information. Make sure you get that. Um, we won't use it the very first week of class, um, except for you to kind of go through and kind of get familiar with it. Um, but the next week, um, your first assignments from the book are due on August 19th. So, get the book, get the book, get the book. Um, our bookstore here at JCC has the books. Um, make sure that you follow their directions on how to go and how to get and all of that. You can order and pick up at the curb. Um, you can go in and get it yourself. Um, of course, it's up to you where you get your books from. You have that freedom. Um, do know that our bookstore will match prices. Um, they have used, you can rent, and you can buy. And they will match prices from lots of places for that. Okay, Amazon being one of them. Excuse me. I'm not used to talking so much. I just, people I know would say, ah, oh, yeah, you're fine. Okay. Um, you also need to be able to get into Blackboard on a fairly regular basis. Um, our charge to you as instructors here at JCC is to check your email every day. Um, and I know, I know, email is old school, emails for old people, but um, part of the reason for that um, email system here is legalities. We have to keep a record, um, both to protect us and to protect you um, from abuses of power and other things. And so we want to make sure that there's some place that this is cached. Um, we can't do that with a lot of other things, um, texts and you know phone calls on my, my personal cell or something like that. Um, and so we have to do some kind of old school things in order to keep things legal and above board. Um, so play along. Um, that's part of your education as well. Figuring out, okay, I have to do this. I don't like it very much, but I have to do it. So here we go. Um, and yeah, unfortunately, such is life. Um, you need a computer or a tablet for completing your work. Um, you need paper and writing sticks for other kinds of work. Um, I prefer that you save everything as a docx, um, which is Microsoft Word. Um, you get it for free as a student, so you might as well you know, take advantage of Microsoft while you can. Um, they tend to take advantage the rest of your life, so, you know. Um, if you want to, if you take notes by hand, um, you don't have to type them up for me. Just take a picture um, and then post those. Um, the JPG um, files work best. Um, you can save them as a PDF. That always works out on any platform, and yeah, it, it, it's nice. Um, so do those things for, for me when you get your um, homework and stuff going. Sometimes you need scratch paper just to work on things, especially in Chapter 6 and 7. Um, and so, yeah, you need to have some paper and writing sticks. Um, a good, ex good excuse to go get some office supplies. Um, I'm a bit of an office supply geek, so encourage that. Um, your grades, evaluation methods, okay. We have three papers, um, about three pages each. Um, we walk through them in three steps each. Um, so the first step is get your feet wet. Um, the second step is, okay, write a draft, get as far as you can. Um, and then the last one, the final draft, um, the one that actually counts for a, you know, a big chunk of your grade, 10% of your grade, um, is your third try at this. And so it should be polished and finished and all of that. Um, and so I'll look at everything. Um, I am a writing geek from way back, and so I love to see how students write and see what they can do and encourage you to go and do better and bigger things. And, um, and if you need a paper looked at for another class, I'm more than happy to run through things for you. Just send it along via email. But for our class, um, the first paper is um, taken aside in an argument. Um, I have three arguments for you to look at, and they each have two, um, two different sides. Um, they're not necessarily diametrically opposed, 
um, because it doesn't always work well. Um, but they are different aspects of the same argument, and you need to explain and evaluate them which one does the better job. Okay, that's basically how that works. It's not a research paper, not a research paper, not a research paper. Um, the second paper is um, a critical look at your own personal worldview. Um, basically, how did you get to be who you are? Um, and so we'll do that in, there's a questionnaire for you to kind of help get at some questions um, in case nobody's ever asked you that question before. Um, and then a rough draft and a final draft. Okay, the rough draft, get as far as you can. Um, and for those of us who've been around the sun a few extra times, you can choose um, kind of formative points in your life and do that way. You don't have to give us a whole life thing, but you can if you want to. It's all right. Um, and there's a video for each of those already up on Blackboard, so you can go look and see what you're up against. Um, the other paper, the last paper, is the capstone. All of the folks who take Humanities 115 have to do this little project. Um, I choose to do it as a paper um, so that you get a chance to kind of bounce ideas off and then actually write it and then polish it up. Um, and so that's our last paper. Um, and there are 10 different scenarios you can choose from. You only have to choose one. Um, and then you go about basically responding to or answering the question, how would you do this? Um, and so it's, it's a good end um, for our class. Um, we have four tests. Um, they are not cumulative, um, although there is one section, um, the thing that I call big words, um, things that, terms that stay with us throughout the whole course, um, we add to them as we go along. Um, and so things like the definition of critical thinking, the definition of an argument, um, the definition of a statement. Um, and it's not exactly what you would expect. Um, we're talking about logic here for the most part. Um, and so it's important to know this is what we're, we're talking about when we say argument. Um, it's not a fight. Um, an argument is basically a conclusion supported by premises. And that's a little bit different from what we think of when you say, oh, John and Joe got into an argument. Okay. Um, so the, the, the big words stay with you through the whole thing. And so you'll have critical thinking is on all four tests, okay? Um, which you know, is fine. But that, that's the only part that kind of hangs over from one to the next. Um, there are four units in the book. Um, I kind of play with the last two units a little bit. Um, chapters one through three is kind of argument basics. Um, chapter four and five are specifics that, we, that cause us trouble when we're doing critical thinking. Um, six and seven are um, deductive reasoning. Um, we like deductive reasoning a lot because it's a yes, no. Either it is or it's not. Um, and so that is two chapters. Um, I put chapter eight, which is inductive thinking, which the rest of the book, um, eight through 11 um, is our last test and we have four tests. Um, Dr. Vaughn has chapter eight in with six and seven, where it belongs because this is how we do this. Um, but I found very quickly um, that this, that particular breakup, we need to put chapter eight with the rest and just kind of hang out with six and seven for a little while. Um, so four tests, three papers, um, what I call reading logs, your notes, summaries, outline, whatever, whatever works well for you to help you um, internalize the information from the chapter. Um, some of the chapters I break up into parts, so you have like 3A and 3B. Um, not that Dr. Vaughn does that, but um, sp splitting chapter three and a half has really been helpful for students um, to spend a little more time with one thing um, before you go on to the next step. Excuse me, which is how I do chapter six and seven. Um, there are most technical chapters, and so I break them up a little bit more um, so that you get, okay, this is the beginning. Here's the first step, okay, and here's the second step. Um, and so that that has been helpful in the past as well. So those pieces. Um, the reading logs are worth 10%. Um, you'll have a total, I think, 18 of those. Um, and then um, the rest of the 20%, 15% um, for exercises and drafts and that kind of stuff, and then 5% for discussion board. 
Um, I do my discussion board a little bit differently. Um, these are, aside from the introduction one, quotes from major thinkers, um, philosophers, logicians, that kind of stuff. Um, and I want you to kind of work through what respond to those statements. Um, things like Socrates, you know, the unexamined life is not worth living. Um, some people get really offended by that at first. It's like, okay, look at what he was saying and look at how he says it and then response. Don't just give me the knee jerk. Okay, so critical thinking responses gets that a little bit. I try to give you something every week that will appeal to or work with your own learning style. Um, I'm a visual kinesthetic. Um, I need to see things, so I read a lot, um, hence the whole English major thing. And I need to do something kinesthetic. We need to do something with our hands. Um, I have found that um, when I can't make what I'm looking at, taking notes fills in that kinesthetic need for me very well. Um, and so um, I take lots and lots of notes. You don't have to take lots and lots of notes, just a page and we move on. Okay, so um, those of you who are audio learners, of course, we have um, this, the, the videos themselves. Um, on the companion site, um, and that's a, uh, there in the, my textbook stuff, there's a companion site to this book um, through Oxford um, University Press, uh, who's our, our publisher. Um, they do a portion where you can get, if you need it, you can get um, an e-text version. Um, we use a regular paper book okay, for class. Um, you can, on your own, go buy the e-text um, if you want. And the, the wonderful thing about the Oxford U University Press one is it's paged exactly like this is. Um, so if I say turn to page 58, you can go right there and it's fine. Um, a lot of other e-texts don't have page numbers, um, and that's kind of rough. Um, this one does, and it will read to you. It has that function. Um, there's a lot of things that read to you these days, so that's kind of fun. Um, so you have a way to get at things pretty easily. Um, lots and lots of different particulars. Um, we Two things about grades. Um, I have a column on the grade book that is current Blackboard grade, current BB grade. Um, and it's correct as long as you're caught up. Um, if you get behind, um, it only counts grades like the grades in four. So it treats the rest of it like it doesn't exist. So if you get a week behind and you've got a chapter worth of stuff to do um, or you're late with paper, um, it's going to, your, your current grade on Blackboard is going to look a little higher than you should believe it is. Okay, and be reasonable. Um, I had a student last semester who was very dis disturbed that um, his grade was so low because he thought, because Blackboard, he was making a 90 something. How do you make a 90 when you haven't turned in any homework and you didn't do the test? Okay, so be reasonable. Um, there's a grade there. It's, it'll help you a little bit, you know. Um, you can always email me for a grade check. Um, I will do that. Um, I do have to be at my computer to do that. I don't have Blackboard on my phone. Oh my gosh, that's just me. Anyway, little tiny print. Um, the other thing is um, we use a 10-point scale here at JCC, so you have to get a 90.0 to get an A, an 80.0 to get a B. 70.0 to get a C, 60.0 to get a D. Um, I always have students who um, take me up on the extra work is extra credit, and they've got 103 in the class. Okay, so an 89.5 is not an A. Now, I do stack the deck for you a little bit. Um, every time you get a grade on a test, say you get a 90, you get an 89.5 on a test, that's an A. Okay, so I round up all semester, so at the end, I don't. So do your work. That's your best way to pass the class and get a good grade and all of that. Um, there's a little thing, there's about a page in here on student responsibilities and critical success strategies. Please make sure that you're reading, you're doing the work. Um, I'll say that a lot, do the work. Um, and that you're asking questions when you're genuinely confused. Um, please don't send me an email that says, I don't know what I'm doing. 
okay, are we talking about life in general? Are we talking about a specific question, specific exercise, paragraph? Bring it in, okay? I can't help you if I don't know where, where, where you got lost, okay? And we'll, we'll talk about that a bit. So read those pages, read page four um, and go through. Um, our weekly due dates, our Thursday night at 11.59 p.m., okay? Um, our due dates are Thursday night, basically at midnight. Um, there's a couple reasons for that. One is we have three major religions in this country and others that are kind of along those lines. Um, and holy days are either Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. I don't want you to believe that Mrs. Oliver wants you to work on your holy day, okay? So my, date, my due date is Thursday night. I know a lot of my compatriots have everything due on Sunday night. Um, uh, no. The other thing is my holy day is, is Sunday, and so I'm not going to be available on Sunday to answer questions and things, and that's a little bit mean. Um, here, do all this work, have it due on Sunday, but I'm not going to talk to you at all. That's kind of mean. So Thursdays, I am online all day and doing stuff. So. Thursday night, it's due. Um, that also gives a little bit of cushion for folks who need a little bit of an extension um, before we get started into the next week. So you'll notice my dates on Blackboard are very short weeks, four day weeks, um, Monday through Thursday. Um, you can work ahead as much as you want. Um, I try to have things at least two weeks out from you. Um, my, always, my, my druthers, um, is to have the whole class up for you before we start. Um, that didn't happen this semester. Um, I do have the whole first and I think part of most of second unit all up with the test and everything all right there. Um, so you can work, work ahead a little bit. Um, if you work all week and need the weekends to do your work, um, work ahead, not behind. Um, and the first week and the second week, I will not count things late as long as you get them in by the first big deadline, which is September 30th. Um, so you have some leeway in there. You have some wiggle room um, to get things done and to get things caught up. Um, once we hit chapter three, though, I will start taking the late penalty. Okay, a little bit about that. Um, I take late work, obviously, um, because most of us have lives outside of school, and sometimes they get to win. They can't always win. School can't always be last on the list. Um, but occasionally we all run into that, oh, it's Thursday and I haven't started. Um, so if you need an extension, email me. Hey, Miss Oliver, I let my week get away from me and, and or something blew up in my face today and I'm not going to have time to do this. Can I have until Saturday? Sure. Can I have until Tuesday next week? Sure. Okay. You can do that a couple times during the semester, and the yes is nearly automatic. Um, more than three, and I'm going to need some sort of assurances that this has been taken care of. Okay, You need to do your work on time. Okay, Everybody gets some leeway, everybody gets some grace, um, and that's how life should work. Um, but you need to get your work in on time. The other part about an online class is we still, by state mandate, have to take attendance. How do I attend an online class? Okay, so the way JCC does it is every week you have to turn in at least one assignment for that week, okay, to get your attendance. Um, so if you're flying low, flying late, whatever, um, do the discussion board. You don't necessarily need to read the chapter in order to do the discussion board. Um, and so that will get you your one assignment in. Make sure you're doing the one that's due this week, though. Okay, That's something that gets a lot of people in trouble. I'm catching up. I, you know, we're, The class is in chapter five, but I'm finishing chapter three. Okay, do the discussion board that ran with week five, and well, you can go back and finish those other things later. So that's how the, that works. Um, students who miss 
more than two weeks worth of work, it doesn't have to be two weeks in a row, so keep that in mind. Um, you, if you miss more than two weeks in the course, um, I am supposed to drop you from the course. Now, you can petition to be reinstated. Okay. Basically, it's a wake-up call for you in order to get you to finish the course. Now, I will email you and say, hey, you missed two whole weeks. Please do something on time this week so that, you know, kind of get that together. Um, make sure that you know, according to JCC policy, if you have jury duty, if you're sick, if you have a family emergency, none of that counts. You get two weeks. So make sure that you're not wasting those, um, and that goes especially for your seated classes, okay? Um, make sure that you also know if you do miss those two and a half, three, four weeks, um, I will drop you from the class, even, it's bef even if it's before your drop date in November. Um, I have had students come do the enrollment quiz, which i got to talk about that too, um, and then never show up again. Sorry, I dropped you week three of classes. That's just how it works. Um, let me do one more thing here. Um, student concerns, the very last page of your syllabus has a little chart there. My name is at the top with my email. Um, my director is Elizabeth Baker. Um, if you and I have a problem, um, you think I'm being unfair, you think I've been discriminatory, you think I've, I've offended you in some way, come to me first. Um, it's never my intention to be mean to people, to offend them, to be discriminatory. Um, and I want you to feel safe in the classroom, our virtual classroom, and anywhere else you go. Um, I'd rather be an advocate for you than a deterrent. And so if, if there's something I've done that I've messed up, please let me know. I'll be more than happy to take care of things and make things better. Um, if we can't come to an agreement, then we have to go talk to my director, who's, again, Elizabeth Baker. If the three of us can't figure things out, then we have to go talk to my dean. Um, and actually, her, her title is Associate Vice President um, for USET, um, which is the University Studies and Educational Technologies. Um, basically, we're the general requirements folks. Um, she's our boss boss, and um, she's very good. Um, she will not let anybody be hung out to dry and yeah but you have to come to me first this is a um, university college-wide deal um, is faculty first come talk to us don't go above our heads until you talk to us um, and then after that we go up the ladder um, hopefully you and I can always come to an agreement that this is what we're going to do okay so that's the syllabus um, the other two things um, you can look at online I'm not going to read them to you but um, the critical thinking major assignments and due dates. I just walk through kind of how you're going to be laid things out. Our class runs from Monday, August 16th to Friday, December 10th. That means our grades are due Monday, December 13th. Um, so you'll have your semester grades by then. Um, we have three holidays this term. Really only two of them apply greatly to us. Um, we are out of school Labor Day, uh, which is Monday, September 6th, so no classes, nothing's due that day. Our fall break is very short. It's Thursday and Friday, October 14th and 15th. And then our Thanksgiving holiday is three days, November 4th, 24th through the 26th. Um, and then we come back, we have two weeks, and then we're done. So um, we have, I have, I go down this list, exam one, paper one, exam two, paper two, exam three, paper three, exam four. Um, our class is going to, I'm going to stop taking assignments from students on um, Thursday, December 9th, okay? Um, mainly because, um, and I'll give you my gig, I teach at two other community colleges, and everybody starts at the same time, and everybody ends at the same time. Um, and so I need a little bit more time to get all my grades in on time, and I figured that way, we have a, you also have a day of wiggle room there. So uh, you'll notice on the weeks and on the future casts that I do and on here, 
um, things are due on Thursday. Now, one of the things I did put into the syllabus was that um, there are, for those of you who need an extension here and there, there are three dates where I cut things off. Um, it's not fair to you, not fair to me, not fair to the students who have been diligent all along for me to allow you to turn in 11 chapters worth of stuff on the last day. Okay, that's not how life works. That's not how any job on the planet works. Um, and so you have three major due dates, chapters one through five. Um, I will not take anything from that um, after September 30th. Um, chapter six, oh, sorry, yeah, six and seven. Um, November 4th is their drop dead date. Um, and then Thursday the 9th um, for makeup work. Now, um, I know, I know things happen, things do. Um, and I try to be really accommodating. Um, and it usually comes back and bites me, not you. So we'll see how that works. Um, but those three days are um, on the syllabus, literally red letter days. Um, you need to have your work done. Um, and it's not helpful for you to be doing chapter three when we're working through chapter seven. So there's that part. Um, there's another list um, that just gives you the major assignments due um, every week. Week one, the due date is Thursday, 819. Um, your EVQ, which I need to talk about, um, Student Survey Intro Discussion Board. Okay, the EVQ, Enrollment Verification Quiz, is how we mark you as entered, um, present on the first day kind of thing, um, for the course. So do that very soon, um, preferably today. Um, you have to have it done by midnight on August 25th. Um, or the system might kick you out of class, okay? Um, it's an interesting dilemma, um, but just, just it's a 10 question quiz. Um, the, only one, the only question that's really important is question number one, um, because it asks you to affirm that you have read the syllabus and that you agree to abide by the syllabus and that anything that happens is on you. Okay. We used to do a student acknowledgement form for all of that, um, but they just put it on the, the syllabus quiz and we move on from there. So do the EVQ. It is under weekly lessons, getting started. I also put a link under week one, um, and you should have that as an email um, very shortly, if not already. So um, make sure that you walk through things the way you should, make sure that you have a look through your book and get used to that. Um, look at Blackboard and get used to that, and we'll all be in this together um, for about 17 weeks. So if you have any questions, concerns, give me, send me an email. I'll be happy to help. Okay, so anyway, have a good day. Bye-bye. Oops, that didn't work. Let's try.